I heard you a couple of years ago, I think it was, at the Fort Hall Forum in, in Boston, and I heard you say in response to some lady's question, uh, don't accept anything without proof, make me prove everything I say. And that was very refreshing, I might add, to hear from a philosopher because so often in studying philosophy, other philosophies, you invariably come to a point where there's either an assumption or you have to accept something on faith or there's some given without proof. Oh, yes, certainly. So I was delighted to hear that, that every aspect of objectivism is provable and in that context I wanted to ask you, can you prove to me, you've written a book, The Virtue of Selfishness, which itself caused quite a flurry because selfishness is often thought of as a as a um, uncomplimentary character trait, to say the least, and y you state that it is a virtue. Yes. Can you, I uh, know, can you, you can, of course, would you <laughs> prove to me that selfishness is a virtue? I cannot possibly do it in the time you would permit me. Uh, half an hour isn't enough, an hour isn't enough. But if you read that book, it will give you some idea of why selfishness is a top virtue or equal with rationality. To just barely indicate to you that the proof does exist, I will uh, call your attention to the following. Men cannot uh, survive without knowing a code of values, without knowing how to act. Man is not programmed to have an instinct of survival. He does not have it. He may have the desire to survive, but he doesn't have the knowledge. Man needs to acquire knowledge of how to live, what action to take to further his life, or what action will lead to his destruction. By his nature, because he survives by means of evolutional faculty, reason which he may choose to exercise or not. He is not forced to sing. He can suspend his reason. But if he does, he will be helpless to survive because he needs a code of values. That is the reason why philosophy has to provide him with these values. And the purpose of it is to protect and further his life. It's a life-saving, in effect, or life-personing uh, discipline, which only philosophy can provide man with, and which his own mind will understand and apply to his own life. So it's in his nature, metaphysically, as a human being, that requires a morality which tells him how to protect and uh, fulfill his own existence. You know, when I hear you say that, uh, and when I read the material you write, the, the two words that come to my mind are, of course, of course it's true, Thank of you. course it's right, and uh, yet so many people uh, take opposite positions, or have adopted opposite principles, or have evaded reality, I suppose. Certainly. Um, what do you, I, I know there are many reasons why people have done that, but there must be some um, essential reasons why people have turned away from the concepts you talk about. Oh, no, they didn't turn away, they never held them. Weren't, weren't those concepts more closely held in the early days of this country? Yes, by implication. Uh, those concepts are implicit in a free society, in a capitalist society but they are not explicit and the trouble in this country was that uh, the morality of altruism the prevalent morality of centuries of human degradation and misery was combined in this country with the politics which required an entirely different morality to succeed the politics of this country is established by the founding fathers which were Aristotelian and with which I agree politically in practically every respect. That politics required an ethics which would justify and explain the proper rational kind of selfishness. By that I don't mean doing whichever you please and indulging every whim. I mean practicing those virtues and pursuing those values which a man's survival requires. That is what this country needed as a moral base. 
but it was split from the beginning. It had a political structure which was unprecedented in world history and in essentials perfect on a moral base of altruism. That is what destroyed this country. It uh, never had any understanding of a proper selfish morality. A morality which does not sacrifice you to other men, nor to, uh, allows you to sacrifice other men to yourself. Uh, it is a morality that holds man as an end in himself and tells each man that it is good, it is moral and proper to pursue your own happiness provided it is a rational happiness. That is, that you can justify it in rational terms. If you find your happiness in the destruction of other men, then it is not proper for you to practice it. But you could never rationally justify the murder, robbery, or harm done to other men. Nor would you enjoy it if you are a rational person. On the other hand, you are not a sacrificial animal. You are not here as a means to the ends of others. It is not in the least bit noble or inspiring to die for another man. Why should you? If it is someone you love, that's a different issue. You may or may not die to save your loved ones. That is up to you. It is not an issue of duty or virgin, uh, virtue. It is not a virtue to be miserable or to sacrifice yourself. It is a virtue to achieve happiness because it is a difficult achievement, demands consistency from you, demands rationality, and is not at all easy to achieve. It is enormously easy to give up and sacrifice yourself particularly if there are collectors of such sacrifices all around you. They can smell it. You want a Führer, like in Germany, you'll get it. You want a holy dictator, like in Russia, you'll get it. And even in personal issues, you know that in practically every family, there is some one strong personality that everybody in the family depends on, and at the same time obeys. Well, that's the little mini-dictator. Uh, and all of those phenomena, the exploiting family or the whole exploiting nation, come from the same source, the morality of altruism. It requires people who do not want to be independent, who want to be led, who want to be sacrificed, if they are told to, on the one hand, and the collectors of those sacrifices, the dictators, or the family tyrants. Now that is 2,000 years or longer of this kind of morality. That is the tradition of all of today's religions which hold a monopoly on prescribing morality. They're not doing a very good job of it, but still they hold that mor uh, monopoly. And that is why people do not understand my philosophy, or when they do, most of them are afraid. They know it's true, and they're afraid that it imposes too big a responsibility on them. Now, does that answer your question? Yes, it does, of course, fully.